إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة All praise due to Allah We praise Him We seek His help We seek His forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and our deeds Whomever Allah guides there is none to misguide And whoever He leads astray there is none to guide And I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah And that Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is His safe servant and messenger O you who believe, fear Allah genuinely as He deserves to be feared and do not die except in a state of Islam. Know very well, my dear brothers and sisters, that the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah and that the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad wasallam, and that the worst of affairs are those which are newly invented in religion and those indeed are bid'ah and every bid'ah is a misguidance. In a time like this, it would be very beneficial and highly expedient to talk about a topic that might be difficult to approach properly outside the month of Ramadan. I see these lovely faces that are enjoying their acts of worship and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah accept from us all. Sometimes we will become so engrossed in this worldly life that we forget that there is something called Al-Akhirah. We spend 11 months out of the year running after the dunya as if that's all there is. And sometimes we look at ourselves and we say, where is the Akhirah? Alhamdulillah. Maybe to a large extent, we consider ourselves practicing and somewhat pious. May Allah forgive us all. But this is an issue where there will be so much difference between people in the sight of Allah. As the difference between the heavens and the earth in terms of how much we are going towards Al-Akhirah and how much we are attached to the dunya. So this is a time, the month of Al-Akhirah, the month of Ramadan, where we are not thinking, hopefully, where I'm going to be in 20 minutes after this khutbah once I go out the door. Maybe we can just forget that we're going to go out the door. Maybe we're going to go out the door to Al-Akhirah and try to imagine that we are going to our Lord. Try to remember the true worthlessness of this dunya. A topic that might be difficult otherwise. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Because there may be some bewildered faces saying, but don't we know that the dunya is worthless? If we know the dunya is worthless, why are we running after it like crazy? Maybe we know it, maybe we can express it as an idea, but it hasn't really come down here to our hearts, so our actions betray otherwise. But Allah tells us, and He wants us to know. He doesn't say remember, He says no. No. Know what, O oh Allah, tell us. اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب وزنة ولهو وزينة 
وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الاموال والاولاد that's all it is كمثل غيث اعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فيكون مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما this is الدنيا وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور An ayah that shakes mountains, my brothers and sisters What will it do to these weak hearts? اعلموا, know That this worldly life Is but play and amusement and diversion and ornaments and a boasting amongst one another and a competition between you for wealth and children that's all this dunya is when you look at it subhanallah what do you see even the muslims competing on the level of the dunya are we competing for al akhirah this guy has a, a nicer house and this guy has a better car and this person has children and this one does not and he has reached this position and that position subhanallah dunya and allah knows allah knows what this dunya will do even to the pious and that's why you find very little in the quran telling us go after the dunya do this do that you're going to go after it by default. But he reminds us about Al-Akhirah over and over and over. So he tells us in this ayah that ultimately it is going to be like the example of rain coming down and then the plants come out. But then after the plants die and they get wilted and they get scattered. This is the dunya. That's why it is called Al-Hayat dunya Because it is worthless. But akhirah, wa fil akhirati, adabun shadid, painful punishment. May Allah protect us. Wa maghfiratum min Allah wa ridwan, and forgiveness from Allah, and approval. Is there any comparison, my dear brothers and sisters? Wa maghfiratum min Allah wa ridwan, wa ma al hayat al dunya illa mata' al ghurur. This hayat al dunya is nothing. But the enjoyment of delusion, it's delusional. The person who puts all of their eggs in the basket of the dunya is delusional. Because this dunya is delusion. Mata'ul ghurur. How often do we remember this? Wallahi, it's difficult, I know. This is a topic that I've approached before when I was a lot younger and I can tell you it was a lot easier talking about it then. But as we get older and you start to own more in that which is tangible and that which is not tangible, we think we're going to live forever. <laughs> we feel as if we will be here forever. Wallahi brothers and sisters, 60, 70 years, that's it. Okay, fine, you're eating properly and you're healthy. 100 years, then what? Adabun shadid or maghfiratun min Allah wa ridwan. Fariqun fil jannah wa fariqun fil sa'ir. A mind-boggling equation. This dunya which seems so complicated. Everything is so complex. But in the end, it's a simple conclusion. Fariqun fil jannah. A group in paradise and a group in hellfire. This is the result of all of this complexity. That's what it's about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Noble Quran, Man kana yuridu al-ajila ta'ajjalna lahu fiha ma nasha'u li man nurid. Thumma ja'alna lahu jahannama yaslaha madhmuman madhura. Allah calls the dunya al-ajila al-ajila the immediate the immediate one which comes to you immediately props itself up in front of you 
من كان يريد العاجلة whoever seeks العاجلة this عاجلة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them what they seek in the dunya but then what will be awaiting them in al-akhirah hellfire wal-iyadu billah these are the people who have completely ignored al-akhirah and only live their life for the dunya man kana yuridu al-ajila are we like that? no inshallah we're, we're not because you are attending this khutbah so it means you are giving some priority to al-akhirah but we said brothers it is a spectrum if we compare ourselves to some of those pious people who lived before and they see our situation they will say it is almost as if you don't know there is akhirah when you see the way they used to live compared to the way we used to live soon after the sahaba they would see the tabi'een and what they are doing and they would feel that the tabi'een have become too attached to the dunya compared to the sahaba alhamdulillah they didn't live until 1445 hijri or 2024 it's a spectrum this dunya is worthless as the ayat say those who want the immediate allah will give them because allah will give the pious and the wretched and the impious of this dunya in fact probably those who are most enjoying the dunya are those who have no piety whatsoever that tells you how worthless this dunya is in the sight of allah because he is giving them let them play let them have whatever they want something is awaiting them in al-akhirah if this dunya meant something to allah you would never see that discrepancy between the pious and the disobedient this is now how we understand the saying of prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam law kadat dunya ta'dilu janah ba'udah ما سقى كافرا منها شربة ماء يا الله. The Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, if this dunya, if it was worth the wing of a mosquito, wait, hold on, the dunya, the whole dunya, if it was worth, that means it's not worth the wing of a mosquito. And you and I are running after it like crazy. If it wasn't worth it, Allah would not give a disbeliever one drink of water. Subhanak ya Rabb. But because it is so worthless, Allah gives them whatever they want. The time when He will give those who deserve. His reward is an al-akhirah and punish those who deserve his punishment. Now we understand the worthlessness of the dunya. The ayat continue. كُلَّنْ نُمِدُّ هَأُولَاءِ وَهَأُولَاءِ مِنْ عَطَاءِ رَبِّكَ وَمَا كَانُوا عَطَاءُ رَبِّكَ مَحْضُورًا And then he says, انظر كيف فضلنا بعضهم على بعض If you want to understand the worthlessness of the dunya, Look at the gap between the rich and the poor in the dunya. Look at those who seem most fortunate, most wealthy, have the most of the tangibles of the dunya. And look at the worst and the lowest who have nothing. The ones who have been tested the most. You see that gap? That huge gap? You will see multiples of that gap in Al-Akhirah in the levels between those that Allah will reward and those that Allah will punish. There will be a larger gap over there between those people. Even the, the same abode itself, Al-Jannah, is so many levels. And Jahannam will be so many levels.
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru inna huwa wa fa rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Someone might retort and say but Shaykh aren't we supposed to live a good life make this dunya wonderful and, and beautiful Yes, absolutely When we live according to the dictates of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his precepts we, Allah will cause you to live a good life this is why he said, فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاتًا طَيِّبًا Those are the people who will live a good life. As for the others, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ In the dunya, they will have a wretched life. But they own everything, yes. But they are wretched deep inside and you do not know. Because all of that wealth cannot buy happiness. Make the dunya as wonderful as you can. But don't put all of your eggs into the basket of the dunya. Don't keep running after the dunya as if it is everything. As if we will live forever. Where is Al-Akhirah in that consideration? The month of Ramadan, the month of Akhirah teaches us is the way or we are in the month of Ramadan, the way we are outside of Ramadan? Understandably not. Can we try to approach, can we try to make the rest of the months a little bit closer where the Akhirah features more in our considerations and our decisions and our comparisons than the dunya? This is what is required. But why? Why do we run after it so much? Why are we fooled by this delusion? Because it has presented itself, isn't it the case? This is why and this is how we understand the fleeting temporary nature of the dunya. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari rightly asked Anas radiallahu anhuma, tell me, why is it that we see the people running after the dunya so quickly? and only walking towards Al-Akhirah, even though it's supposed to be the opposite. So Anas tells them, it is because they are going after their vain desires, their temporary desires, and they are so many. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari begs to differ. He says, no. It is because the dunya has come to them immediately with all of its pleasures and all of its delusions. Man kana yuridu al-ajila, al-ajila. It has come and it has presented itself. And the akhirah is a ghayb they have not seen. He says, Wallahi, if they saw it, they will never choose the dunya over the akhirah. Now we understand the saying of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمْ لَضَحِكْتُمْ قَلِيلًا وَلَا بَكَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا If you knew what I knew, you will laugh little and you will cry a lot. In another narration, he says, لَوْ رَأَيْتُمْ مَا رَأَيْتْ Allahu Akbar لَضَحِكْتُمْ قَلِيلًا وَلَا بَكَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا If you have seen what I have seen, then you will laugh little and you will cry a lot. They said, what did you see, O Messenger of Allah? He said, I saw paradise and hellfire. Ya Allah. If we had seen it, maybe we will act differently. Or maybe again we will forget. Like the kuffar would do. وَلَوْ رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا لِمَا نُهُ عَنْهُ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ but Abu Musa al-Ash'ari's opinion is, if they saw it, they will never choose the dunya over al-akhirah. And this is why very interestingly, 
We remember the saying of Malik ibn Dinar. When he made a very interesting comparison and he said, if the Akhirah, if the Akhirah was lasting porcelain, ceramic, pottery, mud, but it's lasting. And the dunya was perishable gold. Then it would only be wise to choose the lasting ceramic over the perishable gold, the gold that will perish. But this is not the case because this dunya is the perishable ceramic and the akhira is the lasting gold. Subhanallah. Look at that comparison. Choose that which is lasting, even if it is less. And we know for a fact that Akhira is the lasting gold. And this is perishable, fleeting, temporary mud. And yet we are just running after it. This dunya is worthless. Never forget it. Keep reminding yourself of it. Put yourself in Al Akhira. Try to remember. Remember death, remember the uh, al -qabr, the punishment of the grave, remember what Allah has in store for the pious in Al-Akhirah and what He has in store for the disobedient. May Allah make us of the pious, may Allah make us of those who remember. Allahumma laka alhamdu hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fiha. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alim wa sahbihi ajma'in. ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا ظلما كثيرا ولا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت فاغفر لنا مغفرة من عندك وارحمنا إنك أنت الغفور الرحيم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار اللهم نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم أعتق رقابنا من النار اللهم ربنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل نسألك اللهم الفردوس الأعلى وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين أعزنا وأذل أعداء الدين اللهم عليك بجميع من آذى الله ورسولا والمؤمنين اللهم أبرم لهذه الأمة أمر رشد يعز فيه أولياءك ويذل فيه أعداءك ويؤمر فيه بطاعتك وينهى فيه عن معصيتك اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم صبر أهلنا في فلسطين في غزة وفي سوريا وفي العراق وفي اليمن وفي بورما وفي كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم يا قوي يا عزيز يا جبار السماوات والأرض اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا وفك قيد أسرانا وانصر مجاهدين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا والذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين وأقيم الصلاة